This is a gentleman whose classmates predicted in his senior yearbook that he'd be founding, founding his own comic book company. He started with a degree in psychology, and so, but he didn't become that doctor, so we were lucky that we were able to use Julie's <coughs> talents instead of him becoming a doctor. In 1986, he first got into comics, starting with Marvel's Alpha Flight. He became, went to fame with the X-Men titles, uh, including the famous X-Men number one, which is still the number one selling comic book of all time. He's looking embarrassed over here. No. <laughs> I'm sure you know, in 1992, Jim and five other creators broke off to start Image Comics, and he started the Wildcats. He also helped launch Alan Moore's America's Best Comic Imprint. He left Image in 1998 to go to DC, where he is now the co-publisher of DC Comics with Dan Didio. He's won numerous awards and is one of the best-selling comic creators of all time. Please, Mr. Jim Lake. <laughs> Hello. Oh, hey. I'm, I'm actually not looking embarrassed. I, I have food poisoning, so I'm this close to throwing up. So, uh, so I apologize if I if I make strange faces, but my stomach my stomach's gurgling. Um, so it's been a long night. Uh, I just figured I'd open up to Q and A, um, but I just wanted to say one thing. Yesterday. I did a bunch of sketches for people in line, and normally I do maybe five or the first five people in line. I think I did, I don't know, like 20, I don't know, 30, maybe, something like that. And uh, part of that was because I was in, in a city I hadn't been in like 12, 15 years, and it's awesome to see new fans. Uh, it's weird, you go to the San Diego Comic Con, and, and you know, hundreds of thousands of people go, but you, you actually see a lot of the same people every year, and there are the same people in line getting their sketches and stuff, and, and it's great to actually uh, meet new fans, and uh, uh, kind of show them a little bit of what you do. And uh, so you guys kind of inspired me to do more than, than my usual allotment. Today, I, I, don't, I don't feel that well, but maybe after this panel and, and, and all the incredible applause you're going to give me for all, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you guys will raise my spirits. I, I do feel a little better just being uh, amongst my own kind as opposed to the hospital st uh, Anyway, so, um, anyway, so, uh, <laughs> um, just open up to q and I guess, and, the, yes, sir. Uh, DC Universe Online, um, I, I can't say, they, they won't allow me to say exactly the date, but we've been working on it for about four years. It is coming along, uh, it is, we are getting closer and closer, so um, there are plans afoot to, to I, I can't say explicitly other than like get ready, <laughs> start playing, uh, it, it looks awesome. I was just there a week before I, I came here. And I'll be going out there again in two weeks. Uh, it's really coming along. Uh, a lot of the uh, the uh, end game is being put in, and a lot of the uh, so that's a hint. And then a lot of the uh, the cool villains, uh, the the final mob, uh, final boss battles, and stuff like that are looking really, really sharp. Yeah. <clears throat> is there water or something like that? Can I get yeah. set? <clears throat> Yes. So I just wanted to piggyback on his question. Mm -hmm. um, a after the Blackest Night series has just ended, how much of uh, that will appear in the uh, DC Universe game? Yeah, you know, it's really hard. Uh, I mean, since we started on this game four years ago, um, there's a lot of discussion like, well, how, how faithful are we to the DC Universe that's in print? And uh, so um, the, decision, the, the decision was made early on not to... It, w it would be too hard to kind of mirror it exactly to what was going on in print because we didn't know exactly when the game would come out. And um, uh, we also felt that a lot of the people that would be playing the game would not necessarily be uh, DC Comics fans per se. And so, you know, it would be horrible to launch a game and Batman is not Bruce Wayne. And so we, we said th this version of, of the game is going to be sort of the idealistic, uh, platonic version that most people have in their heads where, uh, you know, the Daily Planet looks a certain way and Bruce Wayne is Batman and, oh, thank you, oh, I've got two now. All right, um, <laughs> reminds me of last night, no. Uh, I, I didn't go out, seriously. Uh, so, um, so the decision ma was made early on not to do that. That said, once we go out, it'll be a lot easier to tie into stuff like Blackest Night. Um, so in fact, a lot of the characters that were brought back in Blackest Night we're already going to be in the game because 
Um, it's, you just don't know when, when they change these characters and make another person this character, you don't know how long that's going to last. It could be three months, it could be five years. So we defaulted to a lot of the characters that that everyone kind of knew as this this character. So it was difficult, you know, like who would be the Adam, who would be Blue Beetle, uh, which Green Lantern would we use? And so um, there was a lot of that kind of stuff. But we made the decision early on to go with what most people would remember. So the 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 idea the the DC universe we're putting out probably never existed actually in print at you know at any one given time in terms of the character uh, roster. That said, we have hundreds of characters. So you're going to see characters that you never ever saw in any video game, any DC video game for the first time and you're going to be able to play adventures with them or against them and, and see them. It's, it's going to be pretty cool. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Yeah. sorry. Yeah. That, right. This is something you probably not asked very often, but, mm -hmm. but what is your favorite breakfast cereal? Mm. Mm -hmm. I, I would have to go with uh, Honey Smacks. Or Honey Smacks? Is that what they're called? Yeah, Honey Smacks. But uh, didn't they used to be called Sugar Smacks? Yeah, see, and I like the Sugar Smacks. The Honey Smacks sounds too PC, like it's healthy for you. I just like when it's pure sugar. You know, it just makes you hyper. That's all I want. So I don't know what they're, they're trying to do, trying to lie to us. It's a big conspiracy. Yes? Uh, is your new co publisher role going to prevent you from doing any more art projects? You know, hopefully, no. Uh, <laughs> no. For the sake of the line, no. Um, no, the goal is 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 for it not to. Um, uh, uh, several people asked me yesterday in line and and uh, about the status of All Star Batman and Robin. We actually announced it like a week ago. Or was it two weeks ago? I don't know. Uh, two weeks ago that uh, the second half, the first half of the book has come out, and Frank and I sat down and, and after they announced the co-publisher thing, and because I couldn't really tell them beforehand, like, look, whatever you want to do, I can make it happen now because I'm co-publisher, and uh, so. <laughs> We had this meeting after uh, February 18th, and, and he said, look, you know, the, the, one of the things that always kind of bothered me about the project was that it's not really in the All-Star universe. It has nothing really to do with what Grant's doing in All-Star Superman. It really it falls more into the Dark Knight Returns universe, and uh, I'd love to rebrand it or retitle it uh, Dark Knight Boy Wonder and have it be part of all these books I've already created, you know, Bat Batman Year One, Dark Knight Returns to Dark Knight Strikes Again. And so uh, we decided that the second half of the storyline uh, would be six issues and it would be renamed Dark Knight Boy Wonder. You know, so he said, look, pick a date where you can definitely make it and it should come out monthly. And so uh, it was February of next year. Um, so they had uh, a couple slides of, of, of like the pencil and ink cover and an interior page. Uh, they're online if you Google it and stuff like that. So. Um, when I took the job on, though, I did tell Diane, like, look, I, you know, you could either have me work in the office or you could have me work at the drawing table. I think either way, hopefully you're getting some, some mileage out of me. And, and she said, look, you know, I, I want both. And, and so they made a very concerted effort for, not just for me, but also for Jeff Johns, because he writes so many books, to really give us the time to do that. We haven't had that much time initially, just recently, because there's so much going on in the transition. And, but ideally, um, the idea is that we're, we would have days off, you know, uh, nap time, whatever it is, to go and just do our, do our creative work, you know. And then also, as the DCU winds down, because the game is closer and closer to launch, uh, theoretically, that would free up a lot of time. Yes, sir. Are you going to do anything around the Titans franchise? It's on my list, but I would say it's like number four. Yeah, I mean, I like the characters and everything. I loved them when I was growing up, but the the ones that are higher up, um, I'm not gonna say what the top pick is, but like Legion of Superheroes would be above them. I, I was a very big fan of those characters when I was a kid, and um, uh, they're just like oddball characters. Like, well, they're not so oddball, but when Flash and Green Lantern were part of one book, I liked that as a lot as a, as a kid too. And um, but. Titans was something I got into more uh, when I was a teenager, and and and, uh, um, but yeah, it'd be cool to do something with them. Um, but with all these franchises, I, I, I want to introduce new characters, so it's not just going back and revisiting stuff that I that I liked as a kid. So, um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs>